It's 2 p.m. Two o'clock. It's Thursday. Had a gig last night. This is me just getting up. I can't sleep after a gig. I can't sleep after a gig. I just, I, I, I'm too buzzing. I, I go to the gig. If I have a good gig, I come back and my head's buzzing, totally buzzing. And I can't switch off, man. I can't get to sleep till like four, five, six, sometimes seven in the morning. And then I sleep all day. Which isn't good. I don't like it. And then in the morning when you wake up, the buzz is totally gone. You just feel empty again. And you just think like some of the jokes that you tried maybe didn't work as well as you wanted them to. So you need to really evaluate them and think, am I going to use them again? Am I going to scrub them? Was it the crowd? I don't know. These are all the things that just you need to deal with when, you, when you're a stand-up comedian. To be honest with you, I think I, I think people that do stand up comedy are psychopaths. They're all weirdos. Most of them are. I'm a weirdo. I mean, why? I don't know why you put yourself through it. First of all, I would say I think. Most people who do stand-up comedy are shy, nervous people, terrified to public speak. I always was, still terrified every time before I do it. Um, but you always just constantly try and push yourself to do it. It's like before a gig. You don't understand how nervous I get. I mean, I think most comedians are the same. I think, obviously, the more you do it, the, the, the more you get used to it. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've spoke to a lot of comedians. I like to have conversations with them. And I always ask, what, before a gig, do you get nervous? Do you get excited? Tell me. And most of them, and this is veterans as well, people that have been doing it for years, most of them will say they still get nervous. I've only really spoken to about two or three, really, that genuinely says they don't get nervous. They turn the nerves into excitement, and that's a big thing I'm trying to work on. I'm trying my hardest to turn their nerves into excitement. And it's hard, I'm reading a lot about it and I'm listening to a lot of audio books and watching a lot of videos. It's interesting. Um, but I don't, honestly, I think if you if you do stand up comedy and you put yourself through the mental torture of writing jokes every day, thinking they're funny yourself and then trying to perform them in front of people and sometimes they don't work and people are just looking at you like, we're crazy, it's because we are crazy. Got to be, got to be something missing up here. Um, like I said before, uh, I was always terrified and scared of public speaking. And I built up this sort of image or face or mask or whatever it was to just make people laugh and Ugh, do stupid shit. And I built it and built it and built it up and it just stuck. 
and then something in you just says right you need to, you, this is what you need to be doing you need to do this comedy you need to do this on the stage and it's fucking terrifying terrifying as well as it being terrifying but I love it I fucking love it it's like it's the most thing I've ever wanted to do even more than DJing I don't know what it is it's just I feel like a wee guy again I feel like I've really got a it's not just a hobby it's fucking Obviously, I want it. It's becoming a job. It's, I'm starting to make a living off it, so I actually really love it. But you need to take the bad with the good. Like a few weekends ago, I was um, had my first gig in Aberdeen, and I get booked to headline it. Rock Hopper Comedy. Shout out to Jamie Tate. Cheers for the booking. No, it's not my first headline set. But I feel it was as if that was my first time really, really being a headliner. Like, I don't know, I was, I was booked for 20 minutes and I'd done about half an hour, maybe more. And it was just class, I was just slamming and jamming the whole time. I went up, I, every joke, every bit of material I've wrote, every bit just flowed. And they've never heard me before, so I was selling it, I was selling every joke. People were laughing, clapping, cheering. And I was just fucking so natural, I was just talking to the crowd fucking just hitting them with shit and pulling my phone and reading shit at my phone it was just so natural and that's the way I want to be that's what I've been working towards obviously but when, when you get booked to headline somewhere obviously you're on last you're the main event so people that were obviously um, on before you are all brilliant you know they're all good so you need to you really need to be better than them, you really need to go up and really pull out the big guns and make sure you're doing a good job and the host obviously helps, he's like this is your headliner, this guy's amazing, he's gonna blow your socks off make some nice or make it and it, the place goes crazy and you come on you're like hey hello how are you and it just works and then that was amazing, that's probably my most favourite gig I've ever done the best I've ever done and I knew it, I felt it, I felt it and then you get like you can go to a gig the next night and you can do the same jokes in a different place jobbies so it's just all about how you're feeling as well I, I, I try every time before I go I've got the same ritual I go inside my head I try and think of everything I think of my best gig I heighten it all, I heighten all the senses I'm gonna love the crowd, they're gonna love me. I've got a wee book I write and I write in that. And I try and give my best performance every time. But sometimes one we daft in can throw you off. Like obviously as I get I date a lot more and I get more used to it, these are gonna be wee, wee things in the future. But at the moment, if I turn around and there's two people in the crowd like space facing me or growling or not even smiling, that throws me off. And it just, I, I start to go fucking turn wooden and I'm just no relaxed and I'm thinking about the aim and I'm trying to remember my jokes. It's a tough gig. But as I said, you need to take the good with the bad. These are challenges that I'm willing to take every day moving forward. Because I really want to, I really, really, really want to do this. And I'm going to do it. By the way, before I go, right, if you're only a stand-up comedian, right, and you've probably watched like a, a couple of Peter K DVDs or something like that, don't try and give actual stand-up comedians advice on how to write jokes or how to perform. Right, that's ridiculous. That make that makes me laugh. Right, that that makes me laugh. 